Good evening, you respected professor, senior consultants, and my dear friends who are being here to gather in this wonderful occasion. In this rainy Sunday, Sunday, if you are being here to join in this discussion regarding alcoholic appendix, I would like to thank Team Michael Lab who gave me an opportunity to deliver this lecture in front of you all. See, uh, I don't know because I am seeing most of the being with the families to enjoy this wonderful occasion. So I just want to make the discussion very simple and when you are going to leave this area, we need to carry some certain messages, what are the things we need to know when for a patient who is going to take alcohol for a longer duration of time, in which way it is going to have an impact, in what are the ways it is going to affect your liver, and when you are going to refer the patient for transplant, and how it is going to clinically judge the patient is going to have worse in the clinical condition, and once the patient is on with further complications, to whom you are going to deserve the patient for liver transplant, how are you going to monitor so, alcoholic hepatitis is one of the various types of physiological concerns in a brief pain that is an area of interest to discuss with you all right now in this forum. So, to discuss about the epidemiology, alcoholic prevalence is more common in the United States as well as India. So, if you are going to look into this data, among most of them, among heavy drinkers, around 90 to 100 person who is going to develop alcoholic hepatic steatosis because one, most of the concepts what have been given, if you are going to take alcohol more than 80 grams per day, we figure up about 1 to 2 months, that is high possibility for you to land up with evidence of minimum hepatic steatosis in which if you are going to, if your liver content, if it is going to consume more than 10% of fat, that is of non-alcoholic fatty liver, or it could be because of alcohol fatty liver. So once a patient is going to die with this kind of fatty liver, so the whole other patient is going to get problems. Even if the patient is going to consume huge amount of alcohol as a pain, they have high possibility for them to have further worsening of liver function and further worsening of liver enzyme. That by the possibility, the patient may have evidence of hepatomegaly, fever, hepatic bruise, and other complications to develop within a span of time. That is scenario what is called as alcoholic hepatic. Among alcoholic hepatitis, it could be because of possible, probable, and confirmed etiological factors are there. But once a patient is going to land up with evidence of alcoholic hepatitis, you need to be very, very cautious because that might be an emergency scenario for the patient to attend liver transplantation or the patient to deserve further line of medication or the patient may deserve an intensive care treatment. So, if the patient is going to consume the alcohol, if the patient uh, see, this is a basic outline what I would like to share with you all. See, if you are going to take beer or if you are going to take any hard liquor, you need to make sure what is the composition, what is the content you are going to take. For example, 12, 12 hours of beer and 5 hours of wine, you know, 1.5 hours of hard liquor is almost equivalent. So, it is contains almost around 12 grams of alcohol. So, don't think that if you are going to take even minimum of the hard liquor of toddy or something else, so that is high possibility for us to have a further person of liver injury. So, this is how we need to calculate the main factor. So, what do you mean by every drinking? So, if the patient is going to land up with any evidence of more than 7 drinks per week or 3 drinks per occasion, or in men, if the person is going to consume more than 14 drinks per week or more than 4 drinks per occasion, so, in case of the minimal tolerability, more than 40 grams per day in women, or uh, more than 60 grams per day in men, if the patient is going to con consume a huge amount of alcohol as a binge, more than four drinks, four or more drinks in a row, or five or more drinks in a row, as per the National Institute of Alcohol Action Guidance, what I'm going to mention. So, if they're going to consume for a longer duration, if your blood alcohol proportion is going to be more than 0.08 grams per deciliter for a span of time, that shows the patient has been consumed with binge drinking. So, once the patient is going to have binge drinking, the type of physiology to approach. So basic things, outline the factor of physiology about alcoholic liver disease because any patient is going to take alcohol, one good thing about alcohol, if you are going to stop alcohol at any point of time, there is a possibility for you to liver back with that liver. But once a patient is going to consume even after minimal injury, there is further worsening of liver factors is going to have happen. So normal liver as the day progresses is going to become steatotic and once the patient is going to consume even after that, more than 20 to 40% of the patients can go to fibrotic changes. That's nothing but a steatotic hepatitis factor can also there. That's what we discussed. A worsening of liver enzyme, the ACA to which is going to be high, along with the patient is going to have any evidence of acute abdominal pain, fever, vomiting, and the patient may have intensive care. The patient may develop high level of development, and sometimes the patient can go for a scenario of what is called an acute chronic liver failure, what we are existing, ACA like phenomenon, like more like. 
currently being the most common trait in the field of gap technology, we're going to discuss. There are so many other complications. Uh, extra hepatic manifestations where your aside is your encephalopathy, or sometimes the patient may have very sick bleed. All this presentation can happen in the field of steroid hepatitis. So you need to be very, very cautious whether the patient is going to develop evidence of steroid hepatitis that can be proven mainly by liver biopsy if you want to come through, or the clinical presentation. Obviously, you can have evidence whether the patient is going to develop steroid hepatitis. Or once the patient, even after that, the liver is going to take the shrunken stage, you are all the matrix production, everything is going to come down, followed by the liver is going to land up in the state, what is called the cirrhosis, and even after that, there is a risk of progression for this kind of patient to progress to hepatocellular cancer, one of the most dreadful malignancy, not only for alcohol, alcohol usually considered as a co causal agent for hepatocellular carcinoma. But the main factors are very well known. In Indian scenario, it could be because of hepatitis B or hepatitis C, where because they used to take a chronicity based upon very motivation. But we should not forget this common condition by us because hepatitis B along with alcohol, hepatitis C with alcohol. We are going to look in the Indian data, so many populations that are in rampant worsening of your failure technology. One the patient is going to land with this kind of dual technology. So if the patient is going to have B and C or along with alcohol consumption, there might not be no evidence because one is an incidentally detected event. So once the patient is going to have a rotating screen, the patient will be having this kind of presentation. But in a span of time, the patient may have worsened the event. That is why the factor which is going to get read is poor. So for example, even in my previous talk, I've been discussed about the women. Women is being highly exposed because of the body mass, the ratio, because of the genetic factors, because of the hormonal mechanism, because of the estrogen pathway, the women with the metabolism rates have been entirely different. So women is at, at risk of alcohol exposure, even at a dose of around 40 grams, rather than around 60 grams, what is usually happening in the case of men. And if you're going to have any evidence of any genetic manipulation, or if the patient is going to have any further worsening, any other metabolic disorders like your hemochromatosis, a high molar disorder, or the background of obesity, a metabolic syndrome, even with that, if you're going to take too much of alcohol. And there are, there are, I mean, these are being considered if you're going to have a coexisting virus, that's what I've been discussed with you all. So these are all the preponderant factors that will further worsen your liver enzyme that may be exposed to harmful or related liver injury in progress at a high rate of um, proportion once a patient is going to land up with this kind of event. And regarding coffee, there are some myths that is going to happen because we are going to take around five to six cups of coffee per day. There shows some evidence of amelioration of your liver factors. That too predominantly in case of non alcoholic fatty liver diseases. There are certain papers being there to prove it. But so once a patient being have evidence of cirrhosis, right from a basic knowledge, we should not forget the symptoms and signs from the head to foot examination. How are you going to assess? So we need to assess the breath. So that's fine. And clearly, most of the patients will be lethargic and some patients will be anemic. And yet to put interest because for vitamin A, D, E, K, polystatic pathology, along with evidence of hepatic encephalopathy, we should not miss. And some pointers of UGFD, like even hematomesis of many or many nemesis, or some patients may have evidence of ascites, some patients may have dilated pain, some patients may have failed very much, some patients may have varicosity, some patients may have multiple complications of renal injury, hepatic renal, and some patients may go for hepatopulmonary multiple other complications that we are not supposed to miss during a clinical examination when you want to diagnose a patient with this kind of presentation of alcoholic liver disease. So, alcoholic liver disease right from the most common stigmata of chronic liver disease like spinal injury and pharma erythema and lymphomatia right from the interfoot examination all the systems cardiovascular, your abdominal reproductive, neurological and withdrawal. So usually in the early phase you think there is a withdrawal effect it could be vernix, it could be possible, some withdrawal even. You are need to subject some patient to time and some patient need the long term anti depressant and psychotic support. So, how are you going to recognize this kind of presentation from your hepatic encephalopathy? Because in case if the patient is going to land up with evidence of hepatic cancer, at that point of time, you are going to subject the patient with either benzodiazepines or any anti depressant that might be having further worsening of even. So, always you need to have a clinical worker, clinical diagnosis good imaging and good lab workup along with we need to decide the patient who deserve intensive care treatment is needed or the patient who deserve a work based approach who how to counsel the patient and for the most important scenario to take on. So regarding alcoholic fatty liver, most of the patients are going to take on for a long duration. So that might be having evidence of fatty liver. 
prone to give consideration for liver transplantation or for further management as early as possible. This is the basic about your inflammatory part, your stage in your orthovalid liver disease, your in innate immunity as well as your adaptive immunity which is going to get disrupted. What is going to happen? Your infiltration of T and B cells along with your macrophages followed by you have high evidence of your liver inflammation in orthovalid liver disease to supervent. And this liver fibrosis is mainly because of your DLR activation, your apoptosis and all those pathways, so make it fail to part. But you should not forget how to recognize? So there are multiple questions is there. So briefly about what is alcohol use disorder identification test. I mean alcohol use disorder. So I mean there are a few questions is there. For example, cage, right? Cut down, anon, get in, IO. There are so many questions. So you can able to identify when the patient is having a psychological picture for this kind of worsen your autoga symptoms. So based upon this question, I don't know how many of us are being used in this question, but if you want to recognize a patient in an earlier presentation, so we need to use this kind of questions to diagnose. This is nothing but alcohol use disorders, yeah, test, and as I discussed with you, there are various biomarkers. If you're going to take alcohol over a period of time, you can use various biomarkers like your bilirubin and so many other things. For example, I've been showing you this picture. One is because of carbohydrate defi de I mean, deficient transferability. If you want to look into that, uh, you can see intake gluconide and uh, your intake sulfide, your phosphate environment. So these are all the various markers you can see in your urine as well as in the sample process and never for all of But how frequently we are using it's not most of them, but one thing when you're going to consider a patient for tolerance and other analysis, these are all the areas what you're going to see. We can look into this basic samples for the patient with that also one and other things if you want to see, along with iron as well as your urine markers can be considered. But that doesn't go into this way in your treatment protocol, that doesn't go into this way in your treatment So the basic and very important thing of this patient right now with you all about the management protocol. So once a patient will diagnose with alcoholic hepatitis, which means the patient is having high bilirubin, toxemia, fever, Hepatic gluey, some patient might be having fancy ascites, food be, might be having a so hepatic encephalopathy. So we need to take care of the nutrition. The target the protein has to be at, at least about 1.5 grams per kg per day so that the patient's target protein has to be there. And in order to prevent the nutrition deprivation, the sarcopene needs to take on. So we need to give adequate protein supplementation part. Once the patient going through some nutrients or worsening of the issue, at that point of time, some papers are being given to the protein restriction by the And nowadays, the concept of what they are doing, no major evidence of protein restriction has been added, even if the patient is going to take on the evidence of the patient is supplementation. So we need to recognize the complications of chronic liver and if the patient is having more efficiency, if the patient is having a patient, any patient coming with jaundice doesn't need to be funny because of alcohol. And never think it's funny because of alcohol because alcohol, even if the patient is having chronic alcohol abuse, it's always a diagnosis of the So we need to do all possible behavior. They could be because of hepatitis B or C or A or B. Some patients may have night will be almost than 90. So if you're going to see A, that might be possible. So but it doesn't mean that the patient should not be in alcohol. So always you need to look for other coexisting factors along with all the major factors if it has been ruled out, then you need to take alcohol as strong because the factor to be considered based upon the huge amount of brain, the huge brain to be used in that amount. Next to that, okay, if you pay that amount. Of a bigger decision, but very important thing. So, one of the basic treatment of the patient with the land of the area, so orthodox and bandage, for that we assess the eye, four major schools that we should not have the most important And next to that, your glass for orthodox and bandage, public as well as very important for your system, what is called as a lily, as well as your mat, and your office is very important you do not forget whether the patient deserves zero. How you do it? So you are going to initiate the patient on zero. So to whom do you want to submit that definitely to access zero? Because zero is one molecule in the open flow of alcohol. Show the evidence of your active instrument. So you are going to subject the patient for zero and the data for a walking daily life to be. Once the patient has been subjected to steroid, the patient may have further worsening of complications sometimes. So what are the contraindications for steroid? So 